What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video and this time we've got mainly mint on card vintage Kenner items. I do have a play set and maybe a creature or two but these are all buy it now or auctions that happen for vintage Kenner Star Wars figures over the last week or so as of the filming of this video on the 13th. I think I'm going to release this while I'm traveling. So this is pre-recorded just for you. You whoever you are watching this video. So uh, please leave a like and please subscribe if you're new to the channel and you're interested in prices for a lot of these vintage Star Wars collectibles. Let's dig in. All right, so we've got a few mint on cards that sold from this seller, Tough Nut 1974. I've never bought from this seller before, but always gets positive feedback. And I've talked to a few uh, friends and things like that who have bought from this seller. This one was in kind of rough shape, hence the final price. But it was a 12-back Tuscan Raider. It did have some crunching to the blister and some dirt and things like that on the card. Huge crease going through it. But I wanted to show, you know, not, it doesn't always have to be super, super mint items uh, that, that I cover in these videos. I'm trying to show some more budget-friendly items occasionally. For those of you who just want to add a mint on card 12-back to your collection, slap it in a case shell acrylic case and call it a day. Uh, but this is a really nice one and, you know, a, a good budget-friendly item. And this one sold for $230.50. You can't get any cheaper than that for a mint on card 12-back. That's a really good deal. Uh, Belk's price sticker. Does anyone else remember Belk's? We used to have that growing up. This one was a punched example, but uh, obviously rough shape, but a good kind of budget-friendly one. Uh, Brian's Toys had a number of items I'm going to cover kind of throughout this video. Uh, this was a 12-back BC-3PO. AFA 85 and 85, straight 85s for the subscores. Wow, what a pristine example. Unpunched, no price sticker. Clear blister, that's as good as it gets right there. 2375 took that home. So again, I, I think that six to nine months ago, this was probably closer to $3,000 pretty easily. Uh, but like everything, prices have come back down to earth a little bit, but you're still going to pay a lot of money for an early 12 back. That's straight 85s from AFA. 2375 again took that home. Uh, here was a 12 back seat buy it now situation. This one had an archival case, AFA 80. Card 75, blister 85, figure 85, unpunched, no price sticker. Pretty good example there. 1395 on that one. Um, I was thinking in the current environment, maybe more like eleven, twelve hundred dollars in an auction. This one did sell though in a buy it now for 1395. So uh pretty pretty beautiful. Uh Brian's toys back to him. We had a 20 back D Death Star droid, unpunched example, AFA 75 plus. Card 75, blister 85, figure 85. Here's the back of the card with that rocket firing Boba Fett with the blacked out sticker that covers up the rocket firing mechanism since they decided to not release it as such. Um, but 20 back deep, 20, uh, Death Star droid. And again, uh, 598 on that one, 30 bids, 795. That's a pretty good price on that one. There was a 20 back that sold over at Heritage. That was an AFA 85 that sold... Around $900, if memory serves, 880 to 900 somewhere in that ballpark. So uh, there are some good deals out there on some of these card backs. Uh, here was a Greedo. This one was not graded. It just included a sliding acrylic case. It was labeled the 21 back N, and I, I couldn't tell you if that's correct or not. But Greedo's uh, offer list, you're going to be paying some pretty big money for it. This one did have a price sticker, unpunched example, 766 in an auction for that one. I would I would agree with this assessment here, ungraded but would grade 80, 85 at AFA in all areas. I tend to agree with that, assuming that everything looks legit and there's not been any touch up or anything like that. But very beautiful example for Greedo on the 21 back, and again 766 took that home. Uh, here is one of the few creatures and play sets I had in this batch. This was an AFA 80. Patrol Dewback, but this is the original issue. It did not have the long play logo, which was the original original. This is kind of the second iteration without the long play logo, just the Kenner logo in the lower right hand corner. But it was an AFA 80 mint in sealed box example for the Patrol Dewback from 1978. That one sold in an auction for $1,200. I would say that that price is pretty fair. The Collector Series example that uh, came out a little bit later around the Return of the Jedi 1983-ish. Uh, that one sets you back eight to nine hundred dollars in the same grade. So obviously the earlier example is going to set you back a little bit more. Twelve hundred dollars again in an auction. That's a good price target to aim for. Um, here was the twelve inch slash fifteen inch Chewbacca. Now it was not 
I, I don't think it was mint and seal box. Let me see. This one, it does appear to be mint and seal box, actually, looking at the photos. Uh, it says new in box. So, you know, again, it, it could have been open, but it looks to be still factory sealed to me. And obviously it had some wear to the box, but for a mint and seal box example of the 12 inch Chewbacca, 342.57 was the final bid on that one, 44 bids. That's a pretty good price despite the damage to the box, I think. Uh, really good deal on that one. Uh, next up, back to Brian's Toys. He had a 21 back ESB card for R2D2. This is the hard to find 21 back with this free secret Star Wars action figure mail away, obviously for Bosk. AFA 80. This one, the card got a 75. Blister 80. Figure 85. This one did sell for $810 in an auction on 31 bids. It was a punched example, no price sticker. Um, I think if it had been an unpunched example, probably closer to $1,000, if not higher. These transition card, 21 backs on the Empire Strikes Back card, very desirable. Uh, these in the 48 back Return of the Jedi cards with the uh, free mail away uh, offer for Neonum are also very desirable. So a uh, beautiful example, $810 again, took that home. Uh, another Brian's Toys, this one was a 31 back A Chewbacca offerless card. Card 75, blister 80, figure 85, crystal clear blister. Again, a punched example. That one sold for $455. That's a price I would have paid all day long. And again, that kind of goes back to what we talk about for our Hake strategy is to look for punched examples on AFA 80s. Those tend to command these kind of prices. And that's what I did in the last Hakes auction. I got a 31 back, I believe, or 32 back. I can't remember. 31, I think, uh, for the Tuscan Raider at right around the same price point. I think it was around 400 bucks or so after the buyer's premium. So this one is about the same price, 455 for a more desirable character in Chewbacca versus the Tuscan Raider that I bought. So a good, good deal, I think, on that one. Uh, next up, I had a Patreon supporter reach out on this one. They said they bid on it but lost, and they thought it went too high. Uh, me personally, I think this price is actually really good relative to where Luke Bespin's were selling about a year ago. This one was a 32B looking photo, Luke Skywalker Bespin, unpunched example, no price sticker, clear blister, 80, 80, 75 were the subscores on this one. And it sold for 830 pounds in an auction, which is 1,012 US dollars. Now I, I told him, I, I told this Patreon supporter that I thought this was a good buy actually, because you know, six, nine, a year ago, six, nine months, a year ago, this was 1200, 1500. I saw as high as $1,800 for this particular card back in this condition, unpunched, no price sticker, AFA 80 clear blister. So to me, I think $1,012 was a good buy. Now it was coming from Gibraltar, but this seller is pretty regularly selling on eBay and has positive feedback of a hundred percent on 433 transactions. So me personally, I would have been comfortable bidding on this. Uh, but I, I, again, I think for a, a thousand bucks for a 32 back early card back Luke Bespin in that condition, I thought that's a really good buy. So, um, again, you know, a year ago, 1500 to $1,800. Now they're going for a thousand. So, uh, prices have come down. Now this one on the other end of the spectrum surprised me. I did not expect this one to go so high. It was an archival case. 41 back D Leia Hoth offerless, but it was a yellow blister. Now, admittedly, it was an AFA 85. 85, 80, 85 were the subscores. But as you can see on the label, it was a yellowed blister, very lightly yellowed. Um, and it had some kind of writing there on the racetrack right above the blister there. You can see right there. So I don't know what's going on with that. I, I don't know how it passed muster with AFA, given that it ha does have writing on it, uh, but it did. And uh, it, it sold for $1,114 in an auction, too. It wasn't a buy it now. Uh, 13 bids on that. So to me, that price seems high to me in the current environment. Me personally, I'd probably pay in the $700 range max. I mean, it's a yellow blister. Now, if this had been a clear blister, AFA 85, $1,100 all day long. I, I think it would sell for that all day long. Unpunched, no price sticker. But given that there's writing on the racetrack, given that it's a yellow blister, to me, 1114 seems very, very high to me. But it did sell for that. So, it, and that was not an auction as well. Uh, next up is the debut card for the Imperial TIE Fighter palette. Clear blister as well. Beautiful example. It was graded UKG 75%. Uh, where is the label? Here it is. Uh, card 75, blister 80, figure 85 for an overall 75 
from UKG. But it was a it was a punch card, no price sticker. It did have some litho damage in the upper left hand corner, hence the 75 score for it. But it was clear, which is tough to find for this particular card back and character. So uh, debut card, I, I don't think that's a bad price at all. 650 pounds, which is 792 US dollars. It might be a smidge high, but not by much. I would think $700 all day long uh, in that condition. Uh, next up, here's the only playset. This is a mint and sealed box micro collection Death Star World. How, how often do you see this? Not very often. AFA 80 mint and seal box red label. So uh, this one did sell in a buy it now situation for $1,200. So big number on that one, but that's a beauty. Uh, really great box art on that. I love that. I didn't, I don't think I had any of these growing up. I think all, the only ones I had were the Hoth and the Bespin uh, micro collection items. But this one was a beauty and it did have the trash compactor there. Very cool item for $1,200. Uh, next up, I had this one in a buy it now alert for my Patreon supporters, and someone bought it immediately. I assume they got it. It looks to be a clear blister for Lom on the 65 back, uh, 65 back B. Now it was a punched example, but this seller has some really nice examples for sale. 230 bucks for a clear blister for Lom. I think it would rate an 80 all day long. So, uh, congrats whoever was, it was the Patreon supporter that bought that. I, I thought uh, that was a really good buy. I was tempted to buy it myself and not send it out to you guys, but I think that, you know, from my perspective, I'm not trying to get all, white knight or, you know, pat myself on the back here. But I, I feel like for my Patreon supporters, I've got a bunch of you, okay? And you guys support this channel. You guys support the daily videos that I try to put out. And the least I can do is if I find a really good deal on eBay is send it to you. And, and so that's what I'm going to do. And this is one I did send out to Patreon supporters. It's sold like that. So I'm assuming they bought it. Uh, but congrats on that one. That's a really good buy. Uh, next up, I've got two different, and, and shout out to Lars. Uh, I got two different 77 back A Luke Jedis that sold. One of them in AFA 75, the other one in AFA 80, I believe. And they were both yellow blister, although this one admittedly had a very lightly yellow blister. I mean, I, I think it's just yellowing to the inner tray. Uh, but the outer, outer blister, uh, is, is clear from, from what I can tell. It was an AFA 75 Luke Jedi card 75 blister 80 figure 85 on that one. Unpunched, no price sticker. That one sold for $500 in an auction, but as Lars sent these to me, so I want to give him a shout out. This one was an AFA 80 plus for the exact same card back again, unpunched, no price sticker, but the outer blister was yellowed. And uh, that one actually sold for less money. It sold for $495 on 30 bids. So that's an interesting di dichotomy is that a 75 with a yellowed inner tray sold for 500 and then an AFA 80 plus with a yellowed inner and outer blister sold for 495 So less money, even though it's a higher grade. Really interesting that it happened that way, but that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. I guess the market is basically saying that if just the inner tray is yellowed, but the outer blister is clear, they're willing to pay more money for it, even though it's a slightly lower grade uh, versus this one that had yellowed to both the inner tray as well as the outer blister, and it was a higher grade. So I just thought that was an interesting kind of uh, difference there. And next up, here was a beauty. This was an AFA 80 plus made in Mexico Darth Vader 77 back, obviously clear blister, unpunched, no price sticker. Uh, Lily Letty, this is as good as it gets. It's got the made in Mexico tag in the lower left hand corner. And this one does not appear to have the little hole punch that goes through the card back on a lot of these made in Mexico for, for the U.S. market blisters. Uh, card 80, blister 85, figure 85, and it says made in Mexico on the AFA label. $710 on that one, 72 bids. So this one had a lot of auction action on that one. Uh, but that's what it sold for, $710 plus $8 shipping. I uh, got some Palatoy Tri Logos that sold all at auction, I believe. Uh, the first is Lobot. I think I had this in my What to Buy video. Uh, if I didn't, I think I had a couple of these others that I'm going to show you in a second. This one sold for $315, probably in about 75 grade condition. It's a sneaky tough one to find is the Lobot on the Palatoy Tri Logo. That's one I'd like to get next year. Uh, next up was a Yoda. On the tri logo, this is, I know I had this one in my what to buy. It had a yellow blister, however, and that kept the price down. It sold for $366. I thought that was a great buy. 
It would grade a yellowed 80 all day long in my book. And then finally was this one in my what to buy video. This is absolutely an 80 grade all day long. Just some light edge wear to this Biker Scout tri logo. The blister was mm, really nice and it sold for $410. I thought that was a really good buy. Probably of the three, this one was the best buy in my opinion. Although all three I think were very fair prices. Finally, I had a Power of the Force Luke Skywalker in his battle poncho. This one did sell in an auction, unpunched, no price sticker, yellow blister, obviously, for $325, which I thought was a great deal, just given that loose, complete, ungraded, they can sell for $250 to $275. AFA85 loose graded can sell for this about this price, $325, maybe $275 to $325. So to get it mint on card, ungraded, but in the condition that this card back is in, was a great deal. So really good buy on that one. Uh, that's all I really had for this video. Lots of good deals out there. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.